And greetings and welcome to the QCast. This is season four, episode 25. We're uh, officially in the second half of the season. And uh, by all accounts, you know, I was watching the archive of Hoopsville last night, kind of the discussion of how deep Division Three is this year. By, so by all accounts, I mean, we are having a fantastic season. And one of the the programs that I was really interested to get to know a little bit better and to dig into is a program that I am voting for in the top 25. In fact, there's a few of us that are voting for this program. So we're going to go to the head men's basketball coach of the 10 and two receiving votes, hood college blazers. And that is Chad Dickman. We're going to Frederick, Maryland here. Uh, Chad, how the heck are you doing? And uh, what's going on in Frederick, Maryland today? Uh, well, I'm doing great. A lot of, uh, rain starting to potentially freeze. So not the best weather, but, uh, all is well, man. I appreciate you having me on. Yeah. I was excited to, to, to do this. And, you know, one of the, I guess the favorite things that this has led to this QCast thing is talking to people that I normally would have no way to get to know or meet or talk to or, and, and programs that I that I probably wouldn't get a chance to pay attention to if I was just following my own alma mater around. And uh, I started digging into you guys, Coach, about, I don't know, two weeks ago. Uh, I think it was when my team played Cal Lutheran and seeing how good Cal Lutheran was and backtrack and being like, well, this Hood team can't be bad. And then I started, well, they beat Catholic. And then, you know, so you had Catholic um, and you had some other great wins in there too. But then the Widener win, you know, by 25 points, 10 and two, two and zero in the league. How do you feel about where you're standing right now, Chad? Uh, I feel good. I mean, I, I think our guys have really bought into everything. And, uh, you know, we have another good group this year. Uh, we've had a really successful, um, I don't know, probably five or six year stretch now. And uh, we're just getting getting the right people in the program, and uh, the guys are um, taking pride in everything we do, um, and uh, you know just holding those guys to a, a high standard, and and those guys are holding each other accountable for everything, and um, they they have that competitive edge where um, you know their my goal was always to compete nationally um, and kind of get in the national conversation, and you know as crazy as it sounds, eventually to hopefully win a national championship. Um, and, uh, these guys are on board. Um, and so we've had a solid, um, first half of the year. Uh, we've, 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 uh, it's kind of crazy. We, we have not had not shot it well until the last two games, which works out because we started conference the last two games. And, uh, so we shot extremely well, uh, in conference so far, but, um, up until the last two games, we were shooting 30% from three and, if you know anything about our style of play, we're we're shooting, you know, 35 plus threes a game. So, right. uh, you know, ideally you don't want to be shooting a, a too low a percentage if you're going to play like that. But um, we've uh, we've really taken steps uh, this year, especially uh, from a defensive standpoint and from a rebounding standpoint. And uh, I think that's really helped us win those games that we haven't shot the ball right. great in. Um, and it's gotten to us a point where, uh, got us to a point where I think if we shoot the ball, well, we're, we're going to win the game. Um, right. so, you know, obviously, as you know, you're going to have games, especially in a tournament setting where you have an off shooting night and, you know, uh, especially with how we play, are we going to be good enough in all the other facets to, to win uh, a game where, you know, we, we have a 10 for 38 night from the, from the three point line, or as we've had in the past, a nine for 45 night from the three point line. So, um, you know, we've, uh, we've really tried to figure out some things to, to, um, uh, put us in a position to at least compete, uh, with any team in the country. Um, and, uh, you know, right now, I think, you know, I think we're three and zero with the three and zero against the current top 25. So I think right. when, we get into those games you know it's 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 encouraging to see that you know not only can we compete with those teams we can win those games um but you know we got a our conference is really good um it's it's going to be a gauntlet so you know our, our guys are paying attention they see the um you know the the bubble watch and all that stuff um but i'm like well guys that's that's if we perform as they would think we would in conference but you know i think our conference is a little underrated and uh, if you don't show up to, to, to play, you know, you're, you're gonna, you're gonna take, 
you know, plenty of uh, losses in our conference. So we just got to kind of, uh, you know, stick to the plan, uh, go day by day and just kind of, uh, you know, win the uh, win the battle that's in front of us each day. I want to talk about the league a little bit. So the Mac Commonwealth, which currently top of the standings, you guys are 2-0, and Alvernia is 2-0, and Eastern's 2-0, and Widener, which is the team that's ranked, is 1-1. One and one. I think there may be another 1-1, one and one, but that's, I mean, the, the, those right there, that's a group at the top that's really good. Um, talk about the, the league a little bit. You know, obviously, to, to your point, you know, you, you said it's a little bit underrated, I believe. Um, for people that don't know much about the Mac Commonwealth, talk talk through it a little bit, if you would. Yeah, so it's um, it's two teams from Maryland, us and Stevenson, uh, and then six teams from PA. So there's only eight teams, but um, I'll tell people all the time, like the uh, the worst team in our conference is 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 a pretty good Division three team uh, every year. Um, you know, and, and right now I think um, you know Messiah was picked to finish last in the preseason poll and they, and they started off 0-2. Um, but you're looking at their out-of-conference games and they're playing, you know, um, teams that are pretty good nationally uh, to the final minute, you know? Sure, yeah. Um, so, you know, I, you know, you have those certain leagues where, you know, you may have a powerhouse team that's just, you know, is just going to uh, stomp through the conference and no one really has a shot and you're kind of playing for second place. But, uh, our league's very different. I mean, you you never really know what's going to happen year to year because the the parity is 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 so great. And um, uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's just one of those leagues where you look at the final scores every Wednesday and Saturday, and you're really not that surprised by by any score. Um, so um, it's tough. It, it, it's 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 definitely kind of a gauntlet. And you know, I I always tell our guys like you can't show up not ready to play in our conference because because you'll get beat by 20 because you know it's they're good teams um no one's unbeatable but every single team can beat you talk a little bit from a coach's perspective what what's so tough chat about conference play because you know i've been following division three for i don't know 32 33 years whatever it is since i was a freshman at illinois wesleyan and there's something so different about games in the league where like you could put them in the computer and the computer can say that someone is an, a 12 point favorite. And then you get to the game and, you know, like Illinois Wesleyan at Milliken and all of a sudden that thing's tied with a minute to go. What, what is it about conference play across college basketball? That's so unique and cool and difficult. Um, I think, you know, we just have, I mean, certain, certain leagues have like these intense rivalries and, and no matter what the, what, what teams records are, you know, that those, those guys are going to get up for that game. And, you know, every team has college players who are good players. Uh, maybe some teams don't put it together. Maybe they can't, maybe they're kind of inconsistent, but when conference play rolls around and, you know, in our league, you're playing everyone twice. So, right. uh, and, and some teams three times in the playoffs. So um, you, you're playing teams you're pretty familiar with. Um, you know, there could be, um, you know, rivalries, there could be some bad blood between teams, but you know, it, there's, there's a, um, I think every guy and every coach knows that these games are the most important games in their season. And so, um, you know, it, it, it's one of those things where, you know, you're, you're dealing with, you know, 18 to 23 year old guys and, um, you know, uh, sometimes, you know, they may not be up for a game. Luckily, you know, we've been pretty consistent. Um, but, you know, you we, we've had teams uh, in the past. I've been part of teams where you just show up sometimes and and, and you think because you're better than a, the, the team in the conference that you're, that's in last place that, that all right, we just got to come out here and, and, and get the job done. And all of a sudden, you know, that, that, that team, right. this, you know, the scouting's better. And so, you know, it's just uh, – it's one of those things that – you know, I think teams are just more prepared for games. You're not going to have too many teams. It's kind of, it's not like the second night of a, right. uh, a Florida tournament where, you know, teams are just kind of, uh, you know, getting through warmups, you know, let's play. Um, you know, the, the coaches are familiar with each other and, um, you know, it is, it, it, you're right. It's just one of those things where no matter what the record is for a lot of these conferences, it, sometimes it's matchups, sometimes it's, uh, scouting sometimes uh, coaches are just so familiar with the other team that that they 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 figure out ways to to beat that that team consistently um, even if that team is is higher in the standing so um, yeah it, it, 
it's a good question, but uh, I think that um, I think that kind of sums it up for at least from from, from in my opinion, um, you know, and I think in Division One and in, 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 in high level basketball, you you kind of see the same thing. You see, yeah. you see that home court advantage and how effective it is, especially for conference games when you know the fans are. Uh, maybe a little bit more into it for those conference sure. games, uh, the Big Ten, the Big Twelve, and all that stuff. So, um, so yeah, it, we're um, you know we we're fortunate to be in a strong conference, but you know it's also got its negatives because uh, you don't have any uh, games on the schedule. Where you're just like, all right, well right. at least we got them coming up. You know we can get back on track if if you're struggling. So, um, so yeah, we're we're excited. It, it, it's fun. And it's always good when uh, you play in a competitive conference because uh, there's a lot of close games. I watched uh, over the, over the weekend. I ended up watching a number of uh, UAA games. There was a lot of big games, and it was just the, what you're saying played out. You know, like watching University of Chicago play Wash U and win on their home floor, and watching Carnegie Mellon beat Case Western Reserve, and watching Rochester beat Emory. Like it's hard to go on the road, and I'm sure Widener right now is thinking that same thing. And let's talk about that game a little bit going into the the Widener game. Did you, did you and your guys feel like that was a big one? I mean, they were ranked, I think they were ranked 15th at the time, more importantly, just regional ranking wise, while we're not at the point where we have rankings yet, we're starting to know Widener, Catholic, you guys, some others are in the mix. Did that game feel, and of course the conference standings, that's obvious, but did it feel like a huge game going into it? Oh, no doubt. Yeah. Yeah. And and Widener's kind of become our our rival a little bit over the last few years. Like two years ago, we won the conference and we swept them three games. Uh, last year, uh, they were the only team to sweep us, and they beat us in the semifinals on their home court. Um, and so we 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 kind of have that um, uh, that rivalry with them. So so no doubt about it. Like they're kind of the team that sure. uh, our guys have. Um, and again, with, with our matchups, we're kind of built um, similar. Um, so our games are, are, are kind of, uh, unique, but they match up with us pretty well. And I think that was a problem last year, uh, when they swept us, it was just like, we were kind of like, uh, playing against the, a typical team that we would type of, like the type of thing that we struggle with. Um, and they, uh, and they play really well and, and, and they, and they swept us. So this year, um, you know, our guys were, were hype. I mean, it was the sure. first conference game. They were 15th in the country, um, you know they're coming off of a, a season sweep of us. They ended our season last year. They're they're uh, um, you know a little bit of bad blood in the players. You know like Chris Caridio and I get around great, <laughs> but uh, but but it is it's just like that college rivalry that sure. um, you know they 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 got the game against us uh, circled on their calendar. I'm sure for when we go we gotta go back out to uh, to to Philadelphia. So. Um, yeah, we, we were just completely locked in that game and, and credit to our older guys. Uh, you know, we got some, some younger guys that are, they're playing some roles that just haven't, you know, haven't seen anything in the conference. They don't really know much, uh, about it. And, and our older guys were really, really locked in for that game. And, um, and we shot it incredibly well, which yeah, always, sure always helps. Um, but, you know, I told him after that game, like we did everything we needed to do to prepare for this game. Can we do that, you know, uh, four or 13 more times um, for the rest of the conference season? Um, and so we went to Messiah on Saturday and I was kind of curious to see if we would show up with that same mindset. And, and I think we did. And so that was really encouraging um, to, to, for that, to follow up after, you know, you can always have a letdown performance after a big win like that. Um, but our guys, uh, like I said, they, they, they've been, the last few years really consistent and we don't really have any, especially in the conference games where we like just don't show up for, um, you know, even if we lose, uh, you know, most of the time it's, it's a pretty competitive game. You've got uh, Albright coming up Wednesday, seven o'clock Eastern time. That one's at home. Uh, as you mentioned, the conference slate's going to be a grind uh, the rest of the way. You'll get Widener again at their place. Um, so this is going to be a tough haul, but you're sitting there at 10 and two, two and zero. Oh. I want to talk about um, your style a little bit, Chad. It's uh, it's amazing to me. It's cool how many different ways, uh, you know, one can play the game of basketball. 
um, from, you know, the extremes of, I don't know, maybe a Wisconsin Oshkosh that's walking the ball up the floor and just grinding on you and trying to beat you 52 to 50 and the extreme of like Grinnell and Greenville and what they're doing. And I've seen Redlands play in person three times this year. You've got a unique style uh, and it doesn't match up with, I mentioned some fast paced teams and you play totally different than any of them. You shoot, uh, I think 49% of your field goal attempts are threes. I think I count 49%. Grinnell is not much more than that. Grinnell's 54%. Um, your scoring is at 80, 85 points a game. And, uh, but you're not, you're not playing like some crazy trapping pressing thing. Um, I guess the way I would describe it, and then I want you to describe it and tell me what you guys are trying to do offensively. There's a, it's, there's a lot of like quick dribble drive, you know, dribble pitch, you know, pitch and shoot and guys getting really good looks. There's a lot of threes early in the shot clock that are good threes um, and good shooters taking threes. I mean, how would you describe offensively what you guys are trying to do? So I guess it all starts with recruiting. Um, we, I guess, let me rewind a second before I go into that. So, as you mentioned, like, I don't think, as you know, like with Division three, they're, 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 some schools are built to win. Um, some schools may not be. Some schools have much better resources. Some schools don't. Uh, I mean, there's 440, whatever, D3 schools. Um, you have some that are just going to have an inherent advantage right from the get-go. Um we're not gonna we're not gonna be able to put together a team that plays traditional half court basketball and go toe to toe with the those Wisconsin schools or um, you know the UAA schools uh, or Randolph Macon you know so um, right off the bat you know my I've always been kind of outside the box analytics you know how do we how do we do something different so that we can compete nationally um, without being gimmicky where all right well that works against bad teams but right you know let's say good team figures it out like you're done you know um so you know we, i think just with it with in, in my past I, I was a division two head assistant coach and i got a chance to see some interesting teams play i was in the west virginia conference which had some very high scoring teams like west liberty state um i was at wheeling jesuit at the time there right. were some teams that were just um, did some really interesting, uh, interesting things like Alderson Broadus at the time did like a lot of five out, um, and just really just carved you up doing things. And so you pick up little things on the way. Um, and so when I got down here, I was, I was my father's assistant for two years and, um, it was great because I kind of got a feel for the level and what we could and couldn't do. Like when I first got here, I was like, all right, we need, let's press the whole game. Let's, let's trap as much as right. possible. Um, and you know, that works fairly well against a lot of teams, but, you know, you get those um, really disciplined teams with big guards and, and, and they don't yeah. turn it over and, and, and you're dead meat, you know? Sure. So my thought process was, all right, well, how, how do we really play a different style um, that's competitive, that's consistent, and that, that gives us a chance to, to beat really, really good teams. Even if we, you know, even if we may lose to a bad team here and there, like we got to figure out a way that we can beat the best teams. Um, so the first thing we did was just try to get um, more like a higher skill level and, and guys that could shoot the three. So we don't really recruit anyone that can't shoot the three. Um, right. They would have to do something, be unbelievable at another facet of sure. the game. Um, so all of our guys shoot the three. They all have the green light. Um, I get mad if any of them turn threes down. Um, I tell them all the time, like it's college basketball. Like you don't just walk into wide open three. Like you have to shoot a wide open three if you can make a wide open three. Um, so that was the first thing we did. And, you know, it, it that kind of sets us apart because I would say, you know, 80, 90% of the teams aren't going to have five guys on the floor that, that, that shoot the ball pretty well right. from three. So, you know, right there, you're kind of differentiating yourself a little bit and, and, and stretching out the defense. Um, now we we really don't want to have any one dimensional players where it's just like all right I can only you can only shoot the three you can't put the ball on the floor you can't pass you're a terrible defender so you know we we do try to get guys that um, 
um, you know, are, are somewhat dynamic. If you watch us play, like you see, we don't have phenomenal size. We don't have the best athletes in the world, but, um, but our guys are smart players and they're skilled. And every single year, we're just trying to build on that skill level and get a little bit, a little bit bigger at each position because right. we play a lot of zone. Um, but, you know, offensively, um, we, we, <laughs> We just, it, it's hard to explain. Um, we, we we try to um, get threes and layups. Uh, we've been doing that for a while, being an yeah. analytics and stats guy. You know, I've all I've thought like that for a long time. We we don't take mid range shots unless the shot clock's low. We got to force it up. Um, but you know, we we really don't want the defense to be comfortable. We want them to have to con- you know constantly uh, be aware, constantly communicate. Um, you know, uh, be accountable for the entire half court uh, defensively. Right. You know, like uh, I don't think it's that hard to guard a team that has two guys that can't shoot. Um, you know, you like if you're giving up a layup against a team that has two guys that can't shoot, you're probably doing something wrong defensively. Um, so, you know, we um, we're a little undersized and we're bigger this year, but we sacrifice some size, um, some athleticism, some quickness. Uh, some defensive um, talent in order to get the uh, the offensive players that we want. So sure. it's kind of backwards from a lot of how, how a lot of coaches think where they're like, well, who's he going to guard? Uh, well, can, can he guard anyone at this level? Where I'm like, all right, can he score in our system? All right. And then sure. it, if we're like, he can, yeah, he can never score. Well, we'll figure out how to use him defensively. And, and that's one of the reasons we play a lot of zone is just because, uh, you know, uh, no offense to our guys, but I don't want some of our guys stuck on an island at the top of the key with the, one of the better point guards in the conference. You know, it's it's not going right. to be pretty. But um, with how we kind of um, uh, clog things up, you know, we we kind of force teams to to beat us uh, making jump shots. Um, so you know, long story short, um, we've just tried to to to, to play. Um, in a fast-paced game, we try to get uh, uh, as many open threes as possible. Um, if if teams really want to prevent the three, we're going to try to get as many layups as possible. Um, and uh, defensively, it's kind of the opposite. Like we're not trying to give up any open, like wide open threes, right. and we definitely don't want to give up any layups. So you know, it's it's we've gotten better each year. Like I think I've improved it as a, as a coach each year with this style. Like you just pick up on little nuances each year. Uh, and, and things to focus on. So I think each year I get, you know, our program gets more comfortable playing the way we play. And, you know, we're getting better at identifying the exact types of guys that that have good careers here. So, you know, I think that's kind of shown how, uh, it's kind of why I think we've just kind of slowly um, kind of grinded up in the, uh, I guess, national picture the, these last, you know, four or five years. And we've had some good players. Like we, we've really... Right. Um, uh, my staff has, has done a really nice job, um, you know, recruiting the right pieces. Um, and they've been, they've all been good people. So like, that's, that's something that makes it easy to, to coach. And these guys are, uh, you know, they bought in, like, they don't care. You know, every, every, and we have like 17 guys that can play, like, um, there's not a big drop off and to have, you know, when you have a big team like that, it's hard to keep everyone happy. Um, but you know, with, with our group, they get it. Um, they see the big picture, um, uh, and, and, and they want to be a part of uh, a team that's, you know, uh, hopefully getting themselves in the national conversation. And, um, as you mentioned before, we're getting tops and votes in the top 25 for the first time since 2007, I think was the only other, other week, that we got votes when my father was a head coach, but this was wow. the most votes that we had ever received. So um, we talked about that at practice today and, uh, you know, told the guys that, you know, you guys deserve this. It's, it's a testament to the work you put in. Um, but, you know, in the long run, it doesn't really mean anything um, when it comes to, um, you know, our ultimate goal. Um, but it is, it's great to get some of that recognition. And, you know, if we can string a couple more wins together, hopefully we can crack that top 25 and and make some history for us. Yeah, and it is fascinating how many different ways there are to play. And you guys recruit the exact perfect kind of kids for what you're doing. I would think it'd be a fun system to play in. And, you know, if I was a skilled 
you know, six, six, four combo guard kid that could shoot the heck out of it. I mean, it's a great, it's just, it'd be a fun system to play in. You're scoring 85 points a game to your point. You're rebounding it. Well, which is key to what you're doing. You're plus six on the boards. Um, as far as your opponent's assist to turnover ratio, that jumped out at me a little bit, 170 assists to 216 turnovers. So you're doing some things on the defensive end. I looked at national average, your scoring offenses, it's lower than I thought. You're 35th in the country in scoring average, but we're talking decimal points between 35 and 10. Um, threes made per game, though, you're seven. Threes attempted per game, you're four. And, you know, I assume the teams above you are like Greenville, Grinnell, and whoever. And uh, the, the other stat I wanted to ask you about, Chad, is assists. You're 13th in assists per game. And you are averaging 18 assists per game, which is, which is, I mean, really, really special. Um, I know some of that is a function of how you're playing. You know, a lot of guys getting into the lane and defenses collapse. You kick, there's an open guy there. But still, 18 assists a game is guys that are sharing the ball pretty darn well. Talk about that statistic, if you would. Yeah, yeah. Um... I didn't even know it was that high, to be honest with you. Um, the last it couple, of years, I, think we, I think we've been like 10 to 12 assists the game. Uh, I think around 12 the last couple of years. And and um, we had some guys that could really do some things out the bounce and they got to the rim a lot more uh, easier. Uh, this year, um, uh, we, we I think we just read situations better. And I think we're just like, we're just very three point happy, like, I feel like sometimes we'll turn down a layup to shoot an open three, which <laughs> I don't love, but um, it is what it is. Um, but um, the guys are just, like you said, they're just very unselfish. Like there's no, uh, there's no talk about how many points um, so-and-so had, so-and-so is averaging. Like, you know, you, you have some teams like, Oh, did you get the box score? Can we, uh, after, after the games, like, you know, our, um, we, we, we have guys that just like, they're, they're not concerned with that, um, at least not vocally at all. Um, and, you know, they're just, uh, they, they, they just really enjoy the process and, and kind of the, uh, the journey we've been on and, and continuing to get better, continuing to win games. And they're not worried about, um, you know, who gets uh, the points or anything like that. Um, you know, I, I always say like, you could come up to me after the game and ask me who led us in scoring. And I would have no idea. Like I, I, I don't even pay attention in games. Like I'm watching like execution, right. like who got that guy open, you know, who, who, uh, who didn't crash the glass on this one, you know? Um, so I'm more concerned with some uh, non box score things that we keep track of and uh, team stats. Um, so I think that started to rub off on the guys uh, uh, as well, but, um, but yeah, I mean, they, uh, they do like we spread the teams out so much and, um, you know, I think that it, it's just hard for defenses to to guard that whole area. And we get a lot of sure. uh, just like we, we absorb two, kick it back, get an open three. Um, but that's that's great. Again, I I, I, I did not know we, we were averaging that many assists. So that's that's good to know. I wanted to talk about a few a uh, few of your guys um, just a little bit. And one of the I guess the guy that sticks out more than anyone else, you, you kind of play like you know, that term positionless basketball, you have a bunch of guys that are just kind of even on the floor. Um, but your, your point guard, it's, it's funny. You mentioned that you're undersized, which you are relative to most of the top 25, but the position that you're big, that you're not undersized at all is point guard. Um, so Garrison Linton is a six, four junior who averages 11 points, six rebounds and six assists, which is a, amazing box line i mean the perfect box line for a stud point guard he seems to get everything going a little bit talk about your your junior garrison linton yeah and i think he actually averaged uh better individual stats in that last year um and and he's kind of a do everything um guard just a just a really skilled player uh i think last year he had a couple games where he was like two assists away from a triple double and maybe right. two rebounds. Like he was close a couple of times. So uh, I'm sure he's going to get one. Um, we've had our fair share of blowouts this year. So he's only played, you know, he's had games where he's probably played 20 minutes. Um, but, you know, in those tight games, we're, we're going to squeeze every minute we can out, out of him just because he, um, 
he just does so many things. I mean, he's he he's six four. He might be six five. Um, not the not the strongest guy in the world as far as physically imposing, but he's wiry strong. I think as they yeah. used to call me in high school. Uh, but they uh, uh, he really does, has a good feel. I mean, he's he's long. He gets his hands on balls. He guards the ball extremely well. Uh, he rebounds. Um, he makes things happen off the dribble. He's very he's not the the best athlete by any means, but he he just does it. He's crafty. He's shifty. Um, he's just hard to keep it, you know, keep out of lane. He's hard right. to, to, you know, you, you think you're going to block his shot, but he's, he has like an old man, like step back, kind of fade away layup, just right. like weird stuff that um, he's just a gym rat. I mean, you know, you know, those guys that have just always been in the gym and they, and they just have that, you know, uncanny ability to to figure out ways to, to score. Um, so he's, he, he's really, and he started off this year, uh, struggling a little bit for his standards. Um, uh, I think he was just kind of um, a little unsure of how much of the offensive burden he should uh, carry. Um, and but I think the last couple uh, weeks he's he he's really started to just kind of like let the game come to him. Um, and, and and he's been and again I think his his uh, his performances have, have shown that. Um, but yeah, he's, he's a local kid. We, we watched him as a sophomore and, you know, he was a kid that you're watching in high school. You're like, man, I wish that kid was just like, wasn't 125 pounds. Cause he, I think he'd be pretty <laughs> good. And he just kept growing, um, got a little stronger. And, and every time we watch him, we're like, you know, what? there's something to this kid. Um, and ended up, it was like, I, I remember it was us and Catholic, I think with, uh, with, with wow. the two main schools on him and, it was close and we, we clawed him away from Catholic. Thank God. Um, and, and he's had a great, he's had a great career. Um, and we're lucky to to have him back for one more year as well. But, um, yeah, he kind of makes us go. He's, he, he he's, uh, he, he's going to eventually have a great career. Your leading scorer right now is Trumaine Strickland. Who's a five eleven senior guard. He He's averaging 13 points a game. So there's not like a score that's averaging 20 points a game. You, you look at your box score, and it's unbelievably balanced. So 13 points a game. He is she, he's shooting 550 from the field and he's shooting 40% from three, which in your offense is deadly, right? If you could find a whole bunch of guys that shoot could shoot, you know, 38 or 42% from three, you're in great shape. Talk about uh Trumaine Strickland. Yeah, Trumaine's another local guy uh that we recruited out of high school. He ended up going to Alderson Broadus, uh division two school his freshman year. Um didn't really like it out there. Um, so he wanted to come back closer to home and, and we were fortunate to get him on the rebound. And, um, he's, uh, he's, he's been really, really good for us. I mean, um, uh, he, he's another guy like Garrison, just like he just finds way, just like a good feel. Um, he'll, he'll attack and transition. You'll see him split like two athletic kids and then finish around a six foot eight kid. And you're just like, how, like, how did he even get that shot <laughs> off? You know, like, he just knows um, how to use his body, how to use angles, um, just really crafty. And 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 uh, he's automatic from the free throw line and, and he's really worked on, uh, you know, he's always a solid shooter, but um, he's really put the work in to become a, uh, a much, much better shooter. And, uh, you know, with him, like we haven't lost uh, while he's been uh, dressed for games, uh, but he's missed about half the season. Right. Um, with uh, just kind of a nagging groin injury. Um, that's just kind of like week to week. And, uh, you know, we're, 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 we're hoping he gets to be a hundred percent at some point. Right. Um, but it's kind of, uh, you know, game to game with him. We, we just kind of find out how he's feeling that day. Um, and, 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 and kind of go from there. But, um, yeah, I mean, if he's a hundred percent, then, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're a different team. Um, and we'll take him at, at 75%, honestly. Um, uh, but he's, he's a guy we've been bringing off the bench just because of, uh, we, you know, he started the year hurt and we were playing pretty well with our starting lineup. So we bring him in. He's kind of like instant offense. And sure. yeah, like you said, he's shooting it well. So, you know, hopefully we can get him as healthy as possible. Um, maybe tough with these twice a week conference games, but um, but he's definitely been a a big part of, of our success. And then uh, you, you've got a grad student, a six foot guard, uh, Justin Geelan who's averaging 11 points, two rebounds, three assists. It's almost like every kid has just about the same box box line. Uh, talk about uh, Justin Geelan, if you would. Yeah, so Justin's an interesting uh, case. Um, so Justin went to the University of Maryland. Um, he, he went to DeMatha High School, which is, uh, you know, a, a big-time high yeah. school power. 
Uh, he played basketball and uh, soccer there. Uh, he was a big time, like nationally ranked soccer player. So he ended up going to University of Maryland for soccer, uh, won a national championship at the University of Maryland for soccer, um, and then graduated early. Um, and he still had eligibility for basketball, especially with the COVID year. I think that somehow helped him. But um, so he wanted to play bas because basketball was kind of his first love. He was just better at soccer. So he ended up going to Mount St. Mary's, which is a division one school about half hour up the road from us um, as a preferred walk on and was up there last year and actually played in about 10 games for him. He, you know, he, he was getting in a couple of minutes uh, a game and, and and some games that it wasn't like it was just blowouts and he was getting sure. Um So uh, last spring, uh, Dan Engelstad, who's the head coach of Mount St. Mary's, uh, him and I are pretty good friends. And he he hit me up and said, hey, um, would you be interested in, in, in one of my preferred walk-ons? He's, uh, he's got one year left. Um, you know, we're, we're bringing in some, some really good freshmen and, and he, he may not play even as much as he did this past year. And, and he just wants to, he wants to play. Um, and so, you know, I watched him on Synergy, you know, watched some clips and, you know, made a couple phone calls um, and uh, had him down for a visit. Um, like the kid seemed like he was the type of uh, leader. We lost a lot of leaders last year, like great sure. leadership guys last year. So uh, that was kind of something I was a little bit worried about this year, um, uh, especially with vocal leadership. But um, after talking to him, I was like, you know, he's, he would be a good fit. I don't know if he'll, you know, start uh, play a ton for us. I thought he'd play a decent amount. Um, and he just picked up on stuff really quick. And, um, you know, he's, uh, I don't I don't know if we started him. I think we put him in the starting lineup like the third game, maybe when Tremaine got hurt. But uh, now that he's kind of comfortable with everything, he's he he gives us that little boost sure. um, that I think we need. He's you know, he's he, he's a vocal leader. The guys like him. He's he's very competitive. Obviously, he's he's a good athlete um, and, and, and he's just a, a firecracker out there. So. Um, you know, now that he's gotten, you know, uh, comfortable with how we play defensively and offensively, and he's making strides each each week, um, he's really been a a, a big boost uh, for us. Um, I think he's he, he's a big reason why we we, we started off so well. Yeah, that's a, I didn't realize he had that background with soccer, but that to me, he's the perfect kind of kid for your system, like an athletic kid that's mobile like that which obviously if you're a soccer stud, I mean, it, it makes perfect sense now. And then the final guy I wanted to, to ask you about, um, Garrett Cox gives you, gives you some size, right? Six, seven junior who's averaging 10 points and, and six rebounds. Talk a little bit about Garrett Cox, if you would. Yeah. So Garrett's another interesting situation. Um, he's from the Richmond area. Uh, we recruited him out of high school. He committed and we were like, man, like, like he, we were very, very high on him. Um, and so, you know, he, 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 he kind of played at the small forward spot for them. Like he handled the ball. He shot threes. He passed it. Well, um, he's six, seven, he's athletic, just not the typical kid that we would get, right. um, uh, to be quite honest. Um, so he gets here and freshman year, he just, um, and he had some injuries in high school and, and, and he got up here and, and, you know, he, he, uh, he has, you know, his knee was bothering him and, and he ended up having a knee injury and he had to sit out more or less the whole um, freshman year. Um, so he was a little down just because, you know, he had he, he had put the work in. He was he was excited um, after freshman year. He um, you know really wanted to, to come back, and have a great sophomore year, comes back. And uh, I think he almost maybe even put too much work in it. He came back and and just kind of aggravated some injuries. Um, and so uh, at that point, this was the fall of his sophomore year, uh, just mentally he was just down um, because he had, he had put all this work in it and it looked like it was going to be another kind of a wasted season. So he just stepped away from basketball for a little bit. Um, you know, really smart kid, great kid. And, and, and he was even thinking about just leaving and going to a bigger school. Um, and so, you know, we – you know, we, 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 we talked to him and his family. I said, you know, whatever's best for you, you know, we, we would love to have you here. Um, but, um, you know, he was a, um, uh, a kid that, you know, just kind of a little bit like lost, but he like loved, you know, our program, but he was good friends with all the guys. He was still rooming with the guys. And so last spring, I think like the, the light bulb went on, uh, and he was just like, you know what, I want to do it. Like, 
I don't care what happens. I'm, I'm going to make this work. Uh, so we had a great summer, came back in the fall and, you know, he picks up on things really quick. Like he had, he obviously had, had some familiarity with our program, but um, you would have thought that he had played for us the last two years. Um, so right from the get go, you know, he, he comes back and he's not even that rusty and, you know, he's just doing some things that we don't really have anyone else that can do those things. Right. And, um, you know, a guy like him that can, that can man the middle of our zone that can yeah. help us on the, on the glass that can, um, uh, you know, protect the rim a little bit more, um, and, and step out and make threes. Um, he, he was kind of a game changer, um, for, for us. So, you know, he, he, uh, him coming back, um, you know, before the season, like we, we, we were like, you know, we got the potential, you know, like we, we could be really bad. Like, you know, you never know in our <laughs> conference, but um, if we can put it together, I think we could be, you know, a force to be reckoned with. And, uh, you know, all, everything has kind of, you know, uh, worked out with the exception of some injuries that we have, um, you know, for the most part, we've, uh, we, we started uh, to really kind of start clicking on all cylinders um, this past uh, probably three weeks or so. Um, and so hopefully we can keep it rolling, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, that's, uh, Garrett's a big part of that. And, and, you know, the great thing is that we're just, we're really deep. So you yeah. know, even if we have injuries, like we have, we kind of really missed a beat because we've had, uh, guys that just kind of step up next man up and, and they get it done. Yeah. Very deep team. Um, game to game, you'll play 10, you'll play 11, you'll play 12. You've got a ton of guys you bring in off the bench. that can all play. They kind of all look the same in terms of just the way they play. Um, just as we start to wrap up, Chad, and we're, we're visiting with Chad Dickman, the head men's basketball coach of uh, the Hood College Blazers, who are playing extremely well, 10-2, and 2-0 and in the league. Um, yeah, I'm just curious how much you pay attention to the regional picture, the, the, the national picture. As you know, things all start in Division Three through regional rankings. You're in Region 5. And uh, the D3 Datacast guys did a show this week where – they listed the top three teams in each region and uh, really just via the numbers and the, the three teams in, in no particular order are Widener Catholic and you guys. Now, the interesting thing is, as we're sitting here, you know, you've beaten both of those teams. How much do you pay attention or do you not at all around like where you stand in that regional region five picture and what that means longer term? Um, I pay a decent amount of attention to it. Just, um, you know, I'm on like the, the D3 Hoops website every night, checking the scores, um, you know, checking the box scores. Uh, uh, you know, it's, it's a great resource just because, uh, you know, it's so hands-on. Like when I was at the Division II level, you know, there's one school that kind of hosts the Division II website and right. they just have the scores. Like that's it. You can't click on anything. You don't know what teams did. And, and you know, when I came down to, to hood and got to the division three, I was like, man, you guys have it. This is like division one compared to, right. you know, division two with, with the, you know, with the support and with the uh, resources to kind of keep track of everything and people like you and uh, you know, the guys doing the, uh, all the, uh, all the podcasts and YouTube videos yeah. like, and, and I was just like, this is really impressive. So, um, so I kind of got, uh, uh, you know, sucked in at that point. And, and again, as, as a stats guy, I'm always all right, clicking on these box scores, clicking on like, all right, how, why is this team so good? Like, what are they doing? I'm checking out like their team stats and, and stuff like that, hitting up synergy here and there. But, um, but yeah, like I have a pretty good idea of every single result each night. Um, I got a pretty good grasp of how the region works and, you know, we're obviously kind of rooting for everyone we beat um, yeah. out of conference uh, right. to win and, and, and even the schools that, that, that beat us. Um, so, yeah, I mean, we're, uh, I'm cognizant of it. I think, I don't know how much our guys really uh, pay attention to that stuff. They, they have an idea of, of how it works, but, um, but yeah, you know, that's, that's uh, like I said, we, we, we played well against the good teams and even the two teams we lost to, I mean, Stevens and, and Mary Wash are both good teams. Um, yeah. And, you know, the, um, and, and like I said, like the, I was telling guys like it's, it, it's, we'd rather beat good teams um, than just not lose to bad teams, you know? Right. Um, so, you know, getting those wins was really important. And, um, you know, we got, 
uh, a chance to get some other regional wins um, as we go through the conference. But right. yeah, you know, Catholic and Water are both really good teams. You know, we we beat them, um, but you know, like it, 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 we could show up the next game and and it could right. it, it could definitely go the other way. I mean, uh, I, I'm not naive. Um, but you know, when, um, the, the fact that we beat them, I think really, uh, kind of, um, you know, cements us as, as a team that can play with anyone, um, not, not only in the region, like I said, I think we can right. compete with anyone in the, in the country, especially if we're shooting the ball well. Yeah. You're in great shape to, I mean, potentially be the top of region five, a long way to go. But just what I mean by that is you're sitting here at 833 winning percentage, 545 SOS. And while we don't know who regionally ranked teams are yet i can guarantee you that your wins over widener catholic and cal lutheran in your back pocket right now those are enormous and if you're sitting there needing an at-large bid and you play well the rest of the way you're you should have a great resume so uh, i know you'd rather have that pool a bid and win your conference tournament not sweat it out selection monday but you really do have a strong resume and uh, you know, you're in really good shape. Um, final question really is just that uh, you know, the, the dream of playing in the, in the NCAA tournament again, I think in uh, two seasons ago is the year that uh, you guys lost to Oswego state maybe in the first round. Do I have that right? Was that a couple of years ago, Oswego state? Yeah. Yeah. So not the best matchup, but <laughs> they're not a great matchup for anybody. Um <laughs> What would it what would it mean, Chad, to to get your guys back to the NCA tournament this year? What it, would it mean for the program, for the guys, uh, the school? Um, I think I think it would mean mean a lot. I mean, uh, we we still have some guys that were on the team um, back uh, for our NCA tournament uh, game, and you know it was uh, it was our first conference championship in school history, so they kind of uh, uh, took part in that. Um, you know, it was a big deal on campus. We were the first. Uh, team, I believe, to win any championship in school history in any sport. Um, so, you know, that was a, a really cool, uh, you know, experience for for all those guys. And, you know, just very satisfying that, you know, all the work that that you put in, um, uh, it, it, it pays off and you get to, you know, see, see looks on the guys' faces and, you know, the parents and all the fans are just, uh, you know, so excited. Um, but, you know, uh, this year, again, like I don't we were picked to finish fourth in the in the tied for fourth in the preseason poll. So I don't think that, you know, we were really expected to, to definitely not start off this well. Um, so, uh, you know, the guys have, have had a little bit of a chip on the shoulder and, and, and I like that. I think we play better uh, when that's sure. the case. Um, but if we can get back, you know, I, like you said, ideally we want to win the conference championship. Um, but as you know, you could have one bad game yeah. um and 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 it could ruin a great season unfortunately um so sure. the fact that we're at least in the mix right now for an at large is is encouraging um you know but if we can get back in like our next goal uh, is to win an NCAA tournament game um you know my father's team went there in 2007 um and had and lost in the first round in a close game um i don't remember who they played but uh it was a close game and they lost so we've never um the school's never won a game in the NCAA tournament. So that's kind of, you know, I don't want to get ahead of ourselves, but if we can get there, our next goal is to let's see how far we can make sure. it. Um, and, and uh, you know, with, the, with, with our style of play, um, you know, I think we could, you know, we show up on the right day. I think we could cause some, cause some problems and we're not an easy team to prepare for with, no. you know, one day, uh, right. one day notice. Uh, so, um, you know, I, I could see us like on the second day of, uh, you know, uh, those weekend uh, tournament games, um, you know, being a problem, but, you know, that's, uh, obviously way down the road, but, you know, that's obviously the goal. And, uh, I think it'd be, uh, great for, for our school and for our guys to, to, to get that chance again. And now maybe we're not quite, uh, deer in headlights, um, you know, show up to the national tournament and, um, you know, and we played off, we were state pretty tough. I think we lost by single digits and they just destroyed us on the glass like they do right. with most teams. And, um, and they ended up going on to, right. I think, lose to the, I don't know, Marietta, who went to the national championship, but they almost had, they almost beat them. So, you know, maybe we'll get a, a, a draw that maybe suits us a little bit better uh, if we can get in and, and kind of see, see what happens. But um, yeah, but right now we're just trying to tackle every obstacle as, as they come and uh, worry about all the other stuff that'll take care of itself. 
yeah, this is that kind of year where a, a team like Hood that people aren't looking at right now can come out of there and do something, do something really big. It's it is that kind of there's so much parity. Um, I, we I, all of us have been talking that that do our top twenty five ballots. You know, we're just kind of flipping a coin. You know, the difference between my number seven and my number thirty five is is nothing. There are mm-hmm. teams that 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 I'm not even considering that are probably just as good as the team that's number 17 or something. So it's just that kind of year. Um, yeah. Chad, this has been a lot of fun kind of getting to know more about your guys and your, your program and uh, your offense. And this has been really cool. Um, want to leave you with, with any final f- thoughts you want to share. You'll have some Blazers fans tuning in. You got D three nation tuning in. You got me and my guy, Mike Raniac, two of the guys voting for you that are championing the Blazers right now. He's going to tune in. I know that for sure. What would you like to uh, to leave as uh, some final thoughts here, Chad? Well, I appreciate the top 25 votes, so thank you to, to you and Mike for that. Um, and anyone tuning in, yeah, appreciate uh, pre- appreciate any support we can get. Um, you know, it's uh, It's been a fun ride, and we, and we have a, a great group of guys, easy to cheer for. Um, you know, our fans and our parents are great. Um, but uh, but yeah, we're 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 definitely excited, and uh, and I appreciate you giving me the the, the chance to come on and and talk a little bit. Um, what you guys do for you know the uh, the D three basketball scene is is awesome. Um, so uh, I know that uh, you got a lot of grateful players and fans out there uh, for everything you do. So thank you for that, and uh, yeah, go Blazers. Let's uh, let's see how far we can uh, take this thing. Folks, that's uh, Chad Dickman. And bef- before I close, I just one of the shout outs he gave was for D three hoops dot com. And I, I, I got a second that like I, I use the team pages and the, the conference standings. It is so easy to use, right? You go to teams and you go to a region. It's real easy to find the school. It's easy to find the conference. So be like coach Dickman and, 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 and visit D three hoops.com. It's all there. And, and I do think that division three has it better than division two. I really do. As far as stuff um, yeah. c- folks, that is Chad Dickman. He's the head men's basketball coach of the hood college blazers they're 10 and 2 and they will be playing albright at home on wednesday so coach great to meet you and uh, we i hope you keep it rolling okay thanks bob appreciate it man